St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is Frida Neves from Burnaby, British Columbia, for the repose of the soul of her godson, Louis, his father, Eddie, his brother, Gilbert, and all deceased family and members. It is also offered for her grandchildren, that they will do well in their studies and in thanksgiving for graces received. The second are Peggy and Kevin O'Flaherty from Kenora, Ontario, for special intentions as they celebrate their 88th birthdays this year. Our thanks to our donors for this generous gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Unworthy servants that we are, O Lord, grieved by the guilt of our deeds, we pray that you may gladden us by the saving advent of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Jerusalem, Sing, O barren one who did not bear, burst into song and shout, you who have not been in labor. For the children of the desolate woman will be more than the children of her that is married says the Lord. Enlarge the sight of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left and your descendants will possess the nations and will settle the desolate towns. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Do not be discouraged. For you will not suffer disgrace, for you will forget the shame of your youth, and the disgrace of your widowhood will, you will remember no more. For your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer, the God of the whole earth he is called. For the Lord has called you like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, like the wife of a man's youth when she is cast off, says your Lord. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In overflowing wrath for a moment I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is like in the days of Noah to me, just as I swore that the waters of Noah would never again go over the earth. So I have sworn that I will not be angry with you and will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. The word of the Lord. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rest. Rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for 
you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O oh Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. I will Give thanks to his holy name, for his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When John the Baptist's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who put on fine clothing and live in luxury are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, no one is greater than John. Yet the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people who heard this, including the tax collectors, acknowledged the justice of God because they had been baptized with John's baptism. But by refusing to be baptized by him, the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected God's purpose for themselves. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading at Daily Mass on a number of occasions over the last 10 days has been taken from that part of the book of Isaiah, which speaks to those inhabitants of Judah who have been driven into exile in Babylon. Because the overall message of these chapters is one of comfort and hope, they have come to be known as the Book of Consolation. 
Far from forgetting his people, they affirm, God is about to do a new and wonderful thing for them. He will bring them back to their homeland. In today's reading, God speaks to the holy city of Jerusalem. He addresses her as a mother, a wife, and a loved one. Sing, O barren one, he encourages her, burst into song and shouts, for your children will flourish. They will be so numerous that they will spill beyond your walls into the surrounding countryside. One of the more striking images for the relation between God and his people in the Bible, and especially in the prophets, is that of a man and his wife. The same image is taken over in the Christian tradition and applied to Christ and to his relationship to the church as well as to individuals. In today's reading, God declares to Jerusalem and its people, your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name. The Lord has called you like a wife forsaken, like a wife of a man's youth when she is cast off. The image is not only powerful in itself, it captures perfectly the anguish that so many religious Jews felt when confronted with the destruction of Jerusalem and its temple. They could not help but experience what was taking place as a form of abandonment by God. And so God declares, for a brief moment I abandoned you. For a moment I hid my face from you. But with everlasting love I will have compassion on you. It is hard to imagine more powerful, more expressive language than this to suggest the depths and intensity of the relationship that God desires to have with us. This language has lost none of its significance for Christians. We too are part of God's people, that part that has become the body of Christ. In order to underline the special commitment, the special character of the commitment that God is making at this moment of Israel's history, the prophet appeals to the story of Noah. It too entailed suffering and punishment on the one hand and redemption and new life on the other. At the climax of the story, God solemnly declares his intention to enter into a covenant with Noah and his family and beyond them with the earth and with every living creature on it. Never again, God declares, shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. The sign of this covenant is an element of nature, the rainbow. When it appears, God promises he will remember the everlasting covenant that he has made between him and all living creatures. God obviously has no need of anything to remind him of his commitments to us. We, however, do. We become so caught up in life, in its good and enjoyable things, as well as in its challenges and difficulties, that we forget what we have learned of God's relationship to us of his graciousness and compassion toward us. As Christians, we have, in addition to the rainbow, an even more persuasive sign of the covenant that God has made with us and all humanity in Christ as the memorial of his death and resurrection. The Eucharist both reminds us of that covenant and brings its power for forgiveness and grace into our lives on a daily basis. Advent is a time of memory and of promise. We remember both the longings of Israel for a future Messiah and his birth, death, and resurrection, and a new and eternal covenant that God has sealed with us through Christ. These memories are rich in promise. 
In today's liturgy, the words of the prophet, do not fear, do not be afraid, are addressed to us. Our faith in what God has done for us in Christ enables us to live our life with courage and with hope. Let us now with faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that are sharing in this Eucharist will deepen our trust in God's promises to us in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions of our donors and of those who have asked us to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. For those suffering from psychological difficulties of whatever kind, that they will find relief and peace, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have lost loved ones over the last year, that they will experience God's love in a special way at Christmas, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died recently, especially those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed that his first coming, the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Benedict our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us give to each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Please stay tuned for Father McPherson's announcement. Our thanks to two donors. The first is Frida Neves from Burnaby, British Columbia. And the second are Peggy and Kevin O'Flaherty from Kenora, Ontario. It's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. Our prayer book costs $10, and if you'd like to order it, Send a check or money order payable to the NCBC and mail it to the NCBC, 21 Dunlop Street, Richmond Hill, Ontario, L4C to M6. Sister Barbara Leonard, OSF, is a sister of the Oldenburg Franciscans. She gives retreats, days of recollection. In July of this year, Richard Greco, the Bishop of Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, sent us a copy of St. Francis Messenger with an article by Sister Leonard titled, Jesus and the Women of the Gospel. We were impressed and called her. She agreed to share her thoughts with us under the umbrella of this year's Mission on Justice. I can promise you it will be something you will long remember. On this mission, Sister Leonard, along with Father John Hagel, will motivate us to reach higher and prepare us for the great mysteries of Holy Week. Please help us financially with whatever you can give. Thank you.